Good morning. It's a blessing to be with you today. We've got a few more faces out there this week than we had last week. Glad the sunshine is out a little bit and some of the snow is gone. Well, <clears throat> I was uh, thinking, you know, about being brothers and sisters here and looking at the people that served us in worship this morning. And I just got to thinking how much I love these people. You know, I, I don't think Andy and Jason get near enough recognition because Andy, he just serves people all the time and he's kind and he's good and he's, a, he's part of the beating heart of this congregation and um, I've irritated him for years, but I love him so much and, and, and I hope he loves me back. And Jason, a lot of people don't realize what a solid, good Christian, strong man and leading our kids, good husband and father. This is a good man, and I love him dearly. These are good, good men, and all the others that led us here. Skabinski, he's my buddy, not just on Facebook, but in real life, <clears throat> and Kenny. These are good people. All right, so we're God's family. We are a family, and we've talked in the last couple of weeks about our good, good father in this family, our father God. We've talked about our wonderful older brother, Jesus Christ, and now we're down to the rest of us, all us children. What are we going to do with each other, us brothers and sisters? Y'all ever seen Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Have y'all watched that Wimpy Kid or not? You have? Okay. Well, you haven't watched Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Panisi? He hadn't. No, I'm shocked. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> you've got your, your Greg, you know, he's the kid. And then you've got your older brother, Roderick, who's not very nice to, Brad, uh, to Greg sometimes. And, of course, he's got his uh, rock band loaded diaper. You all know about all that, yeah, the rock band. But uh, uh, Roderick and Greg sometimes don't get along, but in the end, they're brothers. And they stick up for each other, and they love each other. Have you all heard stories about people that find out later in life that they've got a sister or a brother that they didn't know about? And they'll go to great lengths to, to find them and then start a relationship with them, you know, because they're your brother. So, <clears throat> first this morning, I'd like to tell you that one thing we need to do is we need to accept each other as brothers and sisters, accept one another. You need to, reconcile, uh, you need to recognize your siblings. So kids, you know, you're at school up here at Clark or at the middle school or something, and there's about a thousand kids, but one of those kids is your little sister, and you need to make sure that particular kid gets on the bus, because that is your sister. And there's a difference between everybody in the world and your sister, right? Your brother. We're supposed to look out for our brother and look out for our sister, but who are my brothers and my sisters? You know, we want everyone in the world to be our brother and our sister. God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's 1 Timothy 2, verse 3 and 4. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. <clears throat> but in Scripture, the family of God is not everybody on earth. The family of God is a little more narrow than that. Jesus said, come unto me, all of you, who are laboring and are burdened down, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Did you recognize in that that he said, come unto me? So my brothers and sisters are the ones that respond to that invitation and come to Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. My brothers and my sisters are the ones that decide to do that, to take the yoke of servitude to Jesus upon themselves and to be his servants. One of my favorite scriptures about this is Romans 15 and verse 7. This is really the heart of the book of Romans. This is really the reason the book of Romans was written. <clears throat> there were people from uh, Gentile backgrounds and different traditions, pagan traditions, there were people from Jewish backgrounds, and they were having trouble mixing with each other. And Paul said, accept each other just as Christ accepted you 
to the glory of God. Did you see that part that said, just as Christ accepted you? How does Christ accept you and me into the family of God? Because this passage doesn't just say, accept one another, period. It says, accept one another just as Christ accepted you. Well, if I read my New Testament, when the gospel of Jesus is preached, there are people that hear and understand the gospel, and there are other people that resist the gospel and reject the gospel. But those that hear and understand the gospel and let it convict them and convert them, these are the ones that become my brothers and sisters. There are those people who decide to put their trust in Jesus Christ. You know that jailer in, in Acts chapter 16, <clears throat> terrified, he comes out shaking and he says to Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? And they said, you're going to have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And then they spoke to him the word of the Lord with all that were in his household. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his, immediately. So we're going to have to put our trust, decide to put our trust in Jesus Christ before we can be brothers and sisters in the family of God. We need to allow the word of God to bring us to repentance. You know, the scripture says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Am I not working? I am now. Okay, <clears throat> I, would, I, I needed to know that earlier. <laughs> yes. All right, so God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Those that let God change their mind and let, them, let God's word bring them to conviction, those are our brothers and sisters. If you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, says Scripture. So those that are willing to acknowledge Jesus as master and king, and I'm going to do what you tell me in my life, Jesus. Those are my brothers and sisters. And of course, Paul wrote in Galatians 3, verse 26, we are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Jesus Christ did put on Christ. So you are no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, but you are all one in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that in order to be somebody's child, you have to be born? Do you realize that? Were you, were you Kester's born into a family? I'm thinking you probably were, <clears throat> okay? So you have to be born. So does it make sense to you that those who are children of God are born of God? He that practices righteousness is born of God, says the last verse or two of 1 John chapter 2. And then the very next verse says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. John 1 verse 12, As many as received Jesus, to them gave he power to be children of God, even to those that believe on his name who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Those who are born of God are in the family of God. Does that make sense to you? Those that are born of God are in the family of God, and we need to know that they are our brothers and sisters. There, there's a difference between those that are our brothers and sisters and those that are not. <clears throat> in this passage that was read a moment ago by Brother Ray, Romans 12, verse 9, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, honor one another above yourselves, never, never be lacking in zeal, but keep uh, spiritual fervor serving the Lord. You know, it's talking about preferring your brothers and sisters. So, you know, you may have a brother like Roderick, you may have a sister that gets on your last nerve. But we need to accept each other. We need to recognize who is our brother and who is our sister. All right. So then once we've done that, we need to greet each other. Uh, 3 John verse 15, greet the friends by name. Now, when, when we, everybody here is important, and we need to get busy doing this as a church. We preach on it, but we don't do it because there's still too many of us 
that, that walk our well-worn path to our own little pew and we sit down and do our own thing and we don't obey this simple command of Scripture that says, hey, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to greet one another. We need to greet one another by name, says 3 John verse 15. Uh, this is recognition. I recognize you. You are my brother. You are my sister. It is acknowledgement. You exist. You are important to me. It is interest. It shows that I'm interested in you, that I value you to greet you and greet you by name. Romans 16 verse 16 has a close greeting and a distant greeting. It says, greet each other with a holy kiss and all the churches of Christ send their greetings. So you can greet each other long distance, but there's that affectionate greeting that means that you matter to me. So greet each other by name. You know, hi, Zach, how are you doing? Uh, my Lisa is just as important as Melissa. See, both of them are different people. There's one of them, and the other one usually sits right back there. They're all important. Greet one another by name. Then Galatians chapter 2, verse 9 says something other about greeting. When James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me that we should go to the Gentiles and they should go to the circumcised. Now, folks, there are many people that I say hi to around Paducah and different places that I go to. How's it going? How are you doing today? What's going on? You know, but my brothers in Christ and my sisters in Christ, when I give them the right hand of fellowship, I realize that the blood of Christ cleanses them like it cleanses me, that they show, share a relationship with Christ that I share with him, and they are special so greet one another by name, greet one another with a holy kiss, greet one another with the right hand of fellowship, and let it mean something. Now, we need to widen out our greetings. Now, if you're honest, you'll say, well, I've, I say hi to the same people every time I come to church. Widen it out. Let's grow up. Let's become adults in Christ. Let's reach out and touch some people that we haven't touched, and let's show them that, we, that they matter. Let's greet one another as God would have us do in the body of Christ. Be kind to one another. Seriously, preacher, is that what you've got to say? Yes. Be kind to one another. Uh, my mother-in-law, Betty, back there, she doesn't have to get extra bulletins, and she doesn't have to go around to the different rooms of the other people there and give them bulletins and check on them and see if they're okay, but she does. That's being kind. Sister Ann Furr doesn't have to take care of people and give people rides to church, but she does. That's being kind. Brother Bill Simpson over here shuffling along. He doesn't have to ask other brothers and sisters here in the church if they re need a ride to the doctor and give them rides to the doctor, but he does because he gets outside of himself and he's looking out to be kind to other people. Brother Andy's kind to people all the time. There are many of you that are, that are kind all the time. Kindness is love in action. How can I demonstrate love to my brothers and sisters? Give a compliment where you can. You don't have to, but do it. It's kind. Feed someone. It's a kind thing to do. <clears throat> you can feed me if you want to. That's really kind. Uh, fix something that somebody needs to have fixed. Uh, that is kind, and it's something that would be appreciated. Call somebody. They'll be shocked. Call them. And say, hello, this is me, Vicky. you know, and then, well, what are you calling me for? Well, I'm just calling to check on you and see if you're okay, you know, and, and that's a kind thing, and it means that they matter. Send a note to somebody, and they open it up, and they say, whoa, I got a note from somebody, and it's encouraging. Uh, sit down with somebody and just talk to them. Listen to them. You don't have to, but it's a kind thing to do. In Romans 12, 10, it says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Now, this word, kindly affectioned, is a weird word in the original language. <clears throat> it's got the word brotherly love in it, 
But it's also got this other word, storge, which means the kind of love that's supposed to be in a family. Now, see, Mark and Lori and those boys up there, they're a family, and they love each other as a family. That's obvious. And you're supposed to have that storge, that familial love in a family. Did you know in Romans 1.31, where it's listing all the godless act, uh, attributes of Gentile society, one of those is without natural affection. That is this word storge, which means they don't have any love in the family. The mothers and dads don't care about each other, and they don't care about their kids, and the kids don't care about each other, and they don't care about their mothers and their fathers. That's this word. And that is the word we have in Romans 12 and verse 10 that says we're supposed to care about each other like a family cares about each other. Godless society doesn't care about each other. Mothers don't care about children. Children don't care about mothers. Children don't care about each other. But we're supposed to in the family of God and be kind to one another. Ephesians 4 verse 32, be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. Do you realize that forgiving is part of being a family? You know, imagine how many times that April has had to forgive Craig. I can't even think about that, you know. Imagine how many times that Leslie has had to forgive Jason. That boggles my mind right there. Say, that's got to be infinitesimal. <clears throat> but if you're going to stay together in a family, we have to forgive each other, right? And forgiving is an act of grace. It is an act of kindness. It is an act of generosity. And we need to forgive each other in our church family as well. Does anyone here bear a grudge against somebody in the church family? that prevents you from being kind to that person. The Bible says you should leave your offering there at the altar and go reconcile with that brother and sister and then offer your gift. Make it right. We've got to be kind to each other. Widen your circle of kindness. Look for something kind to do this week. It just takes effort to be kind, doesn't it? It takes effort. Did you know that kindness does not come naturally to us? We don't just be kind like falling off a log. We have to give it some thought and kind of plan it and decide that we're going to do it and then overtly do something that's kind. <clears throat> Here's the opposite of doing kindness. Just ignore each other, church. That's the opposite of being kind. Just don't think about each other or consider each other. Just put each other out of your mind. That's the opposite of being kind. Just pass by each other and don't say or do anything to each other. That's the opposite of being kind. Don't think about each other at all. See, that's what the devil's trying to tell us. But God says to the family, be kind. Build one another up and encourage one another. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11, the Bible says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. <clears throat> now, in the church, when it comes to relationships and how we relate to each other, we are in the construction business, not in the destruction business. We want to build people up. We want to construct them and build them up spiritually. We do not want to destroy them spiritually. Paul was an apostle of Christ with all the authority of Jesus behind him. And he said in 2 Corinthians 13, 10, God gave me this authority for building you up and not for tearing you down. The news tears us down every day. You just want to turn it on. Health issues tear us down. Bad attitudes from people sometimes tear us down. Issues with our kids or our spouse or, or people that we work with that are difficult or whatever, those tear us down. 
But in Christ, in the family of God, God wants us to build each other up. Now, listen to this scripture. It's a real simple one, and you've heard it a thousand times. Listen. Wherefore, let us consider each other how we may provoke one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but encouraging one another, <clears throat> and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Notice how that the whole rationale behind that. It doesn't say, church, if you don't come to every service every time, you're going to hell. That's not what it says. What it says is, think about each other that you may provoke unto love and good deeds. Our responsibility to our brothers and sisters is to interact with them, to greet them, to build them up, to encourage them. And one of the reasons why our small groups are so important is because in this society of ours, it is so hard the way life is structured for us to have time together and to be together and to interact with each other and to really have time to help each other and build each other up that these small groups we have are, are a format for, for being together and talking together and praying together and really having an opportunity to build one another up. So whether it's a ladies class or a singles group, I mean a seniors group or a singles group or whatever it might be, we need these small group opportunities to build one another up, and we need to get together more often than just here at church on a Sunday. Hebrews 3, verse 13, encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We need more than once a week. I need you to be aware of me. And you need me to be aware of you. We need to be aware of each other. I need accountability to somebody, and you do too. We need people looking out for us. I need to feel goodwill from you, and you need to feel goodwill from me. We need to give goodwill. This is why it's important. Now, what happens, God forbid, in the family when somebody really gets in trouble? Well, Galatians 6 verse 1 says, Brothers... If a man is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. So restore one another in a spirit of gentleness. Go to that next slide if you would. Okay, that's, that's it right there. So restore such a one. Now, what does that mean? If, if we're really looking out for each other, if we're really checking on each other, which if we stop and think and let that gel a minute, we're not nearly enough, are we? We're not checking on each other nearly enough. We're trying to do a better job on it. But if we're really doing that, then if, if somebody's in trouble, if somebody's not here, if things are not going well with somebody, we're going to figure that out and we're going to know that. Then what do we do? Well, we wrap our arms around that person and we do whatever we can to, to show that person our love and to go and restore them. We want people to go to heaven. We want to take everybody in this room and many others with us to heaven. And the only way that's going to happen is if we care for each other and we look out for one another. So, Galatians 6, 1 and 2 says clearly, If anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted and bear one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. We are a family. And see, we have it as our motto for this year, but it's really true in Christ, and we need to act like a family, and we need to love each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's go to that last slide. Brothers and sisters, what do we do with each other? Well, we accept each other as brothers and sisters. That's my brother. You know, he may be a real, little rough around the edges, and he may irritate me once in a while, but that's my brother. And I'm going to accept him as my brother. We greet each other. We call each other by name. We give each other a hug. We give each other the right hand of fellowship. We thank God for each other as we take the Lord's Supper together. We greet each other. We reach out and we're kind to each other. We work at being kind to each other. We encourage each other because we need it, don't we? How many need encouragement? Raise up your paws. Man, I need it and you do too. We encourage one another. And when we need it, we restore one another. 
So brothers and sisters, this is not rocket science today. This is simple. But this year, and as we move forward together, let's love and take care of each other because we are a family. Next week, we're going to talk about family traditions. The family traditions in the family of God. And I hope you'll be with us there for that lesson. If we can help you today, we want to do that. If we can pray for you, if you need to obey the gospel, please come as we stand together.